Empty your mind. Be formless. Shapeless. Psychic fatigue, psychic exhaustion. What does it look like? What does it feel like? Dennis is not be the second here. Uh, I'm broadcasting here for YouTube, but this is also another episode of the Seeker Podcast. It's been a while since I communicated with all of you. And I want to talk about um, something I'm experiencing right now. Just I'll call it psychic fatigue. I don't know if that's a real thing or not. If you've experienced that before, let me know. Uh, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on how you deal with it. But it's something I've been going through for the last month, I'd say. Um, and I had to I had to shut it down. Typically during October, um, two weeks into October now, today's the 14th as I'm recording this. Um, I put out my attempts to to remote view future world events. It's a fun practice, but it's also an exhausting practice on a lot of levels for me. Um, and this month, two weeks ago, when I was getting ready to do the session, I couldn't do it. I just I didn't have it in me to tap into anything that I thought would be meaningful. Now, normally throughout my remote viewing journey, um, no matter how I'm feeling, I try to sit down and remote view. Um, I always feel that I need to be able to access that ability under all conditions. Uh, so I've always tried to remote view in a variety of settings, variety of mindsets, whether I'm tired, whether I'm feeling great, whether I've got my kids in the room, whether I'm, I've done it in the car, I've done it on an airplane, um, outside of nature, in my home, uh, all different types of places where I've tried to remote view just to condition myself to be able to access those altered levels of consciousness and deepen my meditations. Um, and I, I, I tapped out this month. Uh, I haven't done any sessions in, in a couple of weeks and I promise it's not me complaining, but I like talking about these experiences with all of you who are going through this journey as well. And, and maybe you've experienced this and, and know, uh, you know, some ways to work through it. Um, you know, and I take this as a, part of my learning here as a, as a viewer. I think back years ago, if you listen to my older episodes of the Seeker podcast, I remember saying, encouraging people like meditate every day, deepen your ability um, to meditate and learn a skill set like remote viewing. And this has got to be 2016, 2017, where I was saying, because in the times ahead, you're going to need to trust your own intuition. You're going to need to strengthen your intuitive abilities. And I feel that that I'm thankful that that's been my approach um, because I, I, at least personally, and maybe this is just my own dogma, maybe this is just in my head, but I feel I'm just, it's been overstimulating and attack's not the right word because I don't think I'm being, me personally is being directly targeted. But I think as a society right now, the drain on our, psychic energy is very strong. And I think being aware of it sometimes um, makes it harder. So I, I felt um, for a variety of reasons, just a drain um, on my energy. And it's impacted my remote viewing and my confidence in my remote viewing, which is more reason for me, you know, my next couple targets need to be calibration targets, need to be practice targets, which I struggle with those. Um, but that's what I need to do to get myself back you know, and focus in on track. Um, but it's been tough. You know, the nature of the work I do, um, you know, outside of the psychic realm, uh, I'm, a, I'm a dean of students for a K through eight school. So all day, every day, I'm responding to student and teacher needs. Usually it's emotional needs. Usually it's someone calling for help or showing up at my door and they're upset and I got to figure out what's wrong and try to solve the problem. Um, that's an emotional drain. And I've noticed, um, just a, a great need this year uh, beyond the walls of my own school, just out there in the world. I think people are, are feeling this drain and I think it's impacting how they're interacting with each other and with the world. I know Ben Davidson just put out uh, a few weeks ago through suspicious observers on his YouTube channel, talking about um, the weakening of the magnetos the magnetosphere and the impacts that it's having on people's emotions, their thought processes, their decisions. Um, and it checked a lot of boxes for me as, as you know, we have this weakening, which gives us less protection from some of the solar stuff that's going on and things I don't fully understand, but uh, I'll, I'll link to that. And I, I recommend checking that out. It's like six minutes long where he's just talking about um, some of the things going on that we're not fully aware of, but I will say that I certainly a hundred percent feel it. Um, I also feel that in some instances, my psychic defenses have been down and I've encountered some highly emotional people and 
it's like it ripped through me. And there was one period for about two or three days where I was just completely fried because I didn't have my defenses up because I was so exhausted to begin with. And it just, it just hit me. I mean, it, it hit me hard. Um, you know, and interestingly enough, I want to share some of my, my personal sessions that I do. Um, I, I think that back when I was feeling a little bit better, I foresaw something like that. Um, so I'll, I'll share some of that. And I want to talk about um, uh, what I think is going on with some of my remote viewing, why I think I'm I'm not quite hitting the target. Um, and actually, let me let me share. Uh, for those of you listening, you can find this on the YouTube channel, but I'm going to describe what we're seeing here as well. Um, I'm going to describe what we're seeing here so you can you can still listen along. But I want to share uh, an image that I sketched back in, I think, early September. I shared this. Now, those of you that are listening, um, I have a, a life form standing with his hands on his hips, and I have red energy coming out of his chest, and I have like two arrows in a circle, like almost like the recycling sign, just a cyclical thing. And above him, I have a craft with a yellow beam coming down and an arrow pointing at this person. So that's what I sketched. And then I moved on. And I didn't think anything of it because this was a session that I do usually every month, every six weeks. I'll do a session looking at my future consciousness to try to provide insights to myself on, hey, what are things that I need to know as I navigate the next few weeks in my life? Um, it's been a, a very rewarding experience for me, but it's become increasingly more difficult lately. So I drew that sketch in the beginning of September. And then on September 25th, I was out with, uh, I was at my, I was in my home and my children came running inside saying, there's a UFO outside, daddy, there's a UFO outside. And I'm like, I mean, that would be amazing, but I highly doubt there's a UFO outside. So the people I was with, everybody, they stayed inside. And I said, well, I'm always curious. I'm going to go out and check. So I'm going to share a picture here. And that's not the right one. Oh, okay. Yes, it is. And as you can see in this picture here, there is a UFO in the sky. Uh, it looks like a triangle that's projecting light. I remember when I was out there, I went out and I looked at this picture. And some of you probably know what this is already. But I went out there and I looked at this image. Uh, or I looked at this in reality. And the light looked like it was spotlighting down and it was just moving really slow across the horizon, like very slow. I've never seen a craft like this, but I recognize the shape. Uh, no longer share my screen, but I recognize the shape and I suspected it was Starlink. It was Elon Musk, but I live in Pennsylvania um, and I wasn't aware of any launches or any reason for Elon Musk to be launching uh, SpaceX and putting satellites in the sky um, over my neighborhood. That's something I thought only happened in California or Florida or somewhere not here. So I was, I was a little worried about what it was. Of course, social media blows up and it eventually came out that one of Musk's rockets launched in Florida and flew up the East Coast. And then that's what, what I was seeing that night. And I got, I got that amazing picture of it. Um, I say that for this reason. When I do my personal sessions for myself, I drew this. I drew a person with a craft in the sky, that person is me, obviously, um, seeing that I was going to experience some kind of UFO event. Then my conscious mind stepped in because this is the danger of doing a front-loaded session. I know I'm the target. I know my future is the target. I know everything that's involved in my life. And I, I'm too new at this to have a valid opinion, but I can, I can speak from my experience now, um, having done these quite frequently now. When you're front loaded, I didn't explore that any further because I thought, well, that's weird. I'm not going to see a UFO. I don't need to push that and gather any more data about that. I'm going to keep it moving. The other thing that I'm guilty of is I'm looking for certain data points in my personal life. And when I do remote viewing sessions, I feel now, or when I do world events, looking for a certain feeling, a certain connection. And I feel that this is why I need to recalibrate because I'm looking for certain things, which is either 
because I'm front loaded on these personal sessions that I do, or because um, or in, in something like a world event scenario, I think I'm looking for the fantastic. Um, and I need to really step back and get back to basics. I'm not experienced enough. I don't have enough time in where I can go that far out of structure. I think I, I am developing kind of my within the structure, my own style, but I, I'm, I'm still too new to just go out and do whatever. Um, with something like world events and something like mom, um, my, you know, looking at my future consciousness, they're structured very similarly in you're getting a whole bunch of different data points as opposed to a typical target. If it's tasked in my opinion, well, you're looking for a specific event, a specific marker, a specific data point that you can hone in and focus in on. These are broad collection. And there's, there's a, there's a lot of value to that. I see that every, every week with crypto viewing, there's uh, a lot of value to be gained from that. But I feel that it's also um, very difficult, uh, I guess, for somebody with my experience level to really hone in on things because I'm um, just, just scoop it in as much as I possibly can. So a lesson learned for me, something I'd like to do better is really pick those data points and double down on them and extract more information. I wish that I would have taken this sketch here and expanded upon it. What can I see? What can I learn from it? Um, what other data points can I get from that one sketch? But my conscious mind stepped in and said, nope, Dennis, this is you. You're not going to see a UFO. And the other thing that I thought to myself was, wow, so you see an airplane in the sky. Why would that be significant? I don't want to look at that because I'm more interested in looking at X, Y, and Z that's really weighing on my mind right now. Then I find when I don't get those data points, then I get frustrated. But when I get those data points, then I think, nope, this is front loaded. So we're going to move on to something else. Um, so it's a challenge, uh, you know, with with those front loaded sessions. And again, I don't put them out for anybody. Those are for me. And that's just me kind of exploring my own psyche, my own consciousness. Um, but my big takeaway, because I, I just worked at Target um, with Hellfire and I, man, <laughs> I, I bombed it. My first page had some, it was like starting out. And then I just went off on this tangent, which is okay. It happens. But I think I need to recalibrate and get some solid, verifiable targets under my belt um, before getting back into something like world events, um, you know, and, and those more broad, ambiguous type of targets. They're fun to do, um, but I, I'm really trying to hone my focus as a, as a remote viewer. Um, as, I, as I mentioned, I, I just I feel exhausted. Um, and I think it's a combination of things. I think it's been trying to knock these sessions out. And then it's like I knock this session out and then I move right on to the next project because I feel at this point in time, that I don't have time. I've got too many things going on in my life. But I also feel that remote viewing is very important. It's important to me, this, this study, this discipline, this understanding. Um, so the the pain that I'm going through right now, it's it's more emotional pain. Um, you know, and psychological pain, I think. I mean, it's it's a growth point and that's how I'm viewing it, but that doesn't make it any easier for me as I'm, I'm in the thick of it right now. Um, so I'm going to push through and find, you know, go back to basics again. I've done this several times as a remote viewer, go back to basics and build myself back up again and see where it leads me. Um, but every step of it is, is, uh, has been pretty exhausting. In thinking about what I'm feeling and experiencing, um, I, best way I can describe it is it, it feels like my my central nervous system was in in my in my work uh, as an author. I, I did a lot of if, you, if you've ever, if you've read Food for the Archons, I talked a lot about the electromagnetic field, and I re relied on uh, HeartMath Institute's research. And then some testimony from Whitley Strieber's book, Master of the Key, um, talking about a component of the central nervous system 
That's an electromagnetic field. They call it like your electromagnetic sense organ. Um, so that's kind of my worldview of things, my, my view of how some of this psychic stuff works. And what I feel right now, so I, you know, and Carlos Castaneda talked about it too. We call it your glowing code of awareness um, that surrounds the body. And I feel like lately over the past month, because I've had so many things going on, it's as if I got hit with a burst of radiation and it, it depleted that field that is around my body. I can feel it. It feels weaker. It doesn't feel as strong. Um, and I don't think it's gone forever. I mean, I've been through phases like this before and sometimes just stress in life and hardship in life makes it harder for us to hone in on, on some of those things. But I feel pretty depleted right now because of my job, because of my concern for things going on in the world, just being a, a father. Um, I have a lot of things that are stressing me out. And then I get stressed because it's like, I'm not dedicating enough time to my psychic and intuitive practices and, and practices and, um, it just spirals. My anxiety spikes and goes through the roof. And it's just, it, some days I feel like I've been, uh, I've been a hot mess. And again, I'm, I'm not complaining here or looking for pity. I'm sharing this for those of you that are going through this. Um, you know, maybe you can find some comfort in recognizing that you're not the only one that's experiencing it, but it feels like I've been hit with something. And I use this strictly as a metaphor. I don't think that I've been actually physically targeted or hit or attacked. I think it's a combination of so many signals coming in uh, on a on a psychic or energetic level to me that my system just just shut down. It just it's like I just exhaled like a I feel like a deflated balloon, just like and there's just nothing left. Um, and I haven't had as many opportunities lately to get up in the morning and and meditate and do yoga to the level that I usually do. I'm doing it but I'm going through the motions right now as a discipline. Um, I'm not getting the deep uh, grounding and resetting that those things usually bring me. I haven't had much time to get out in the nature. I haven't had much time to even be alone lately. Um, those are all things that for me, help me to get grounded. I recognize that that's what I need. I just haven't had an opportunity in about a month to, to really take advantage of, of some of those things that that are so vital to to me. Um, so moving forward, I will be taking things easy, uh, and kind of building myself back up to get to the level of, of where I was. All right. So speaking of this, this energy and this drain, um, I, I'm going to share another session I did back in July, July 18th was the date of this. Um, Again, just communicating with my future consciousness, seeing is there information that I need. And I think this describes kind of what I'm feeling right now. Um, so for, again, for those of you listening and not seeing the screen, I drew a life form, just a stick figure. And I had this red and blue energy moving in the direction of this life form here. I just wrote, there's an energy coming. I see it washing over a life, a mix of energy. Um, I, I, there's love in there. I see this energy bending around the life. Life weathers the storm bends this storm and takes a piece of it, stands stronger, more confident, willful, intentional, alert, and aware, and enlightened. And then I wrote the word danger flashes quickly over the life uh, above him. Instant of fear, but then grounded, leaving, leaning into the energy with confidence. I felt empowered and screaming like a war cry. And then I drew this here as the energy is coming, he leans into it. Um, but then... You have this dangerous event. You see the energy has moved past him now. So he's leaning into the energy. The energy's bending around him. And then the energy's now behind him. But he took something from that energy. And it's, it's this tiny piece of the energy that I sketched right in his heart. Um, it spreads through all of him, elevating him to a new level. Not everyone can say the same. Um, so I, I share that in feeling like everything that I'm describing now is that data point. Um, right there. Uh, and I did, ex I know, I'm pretty sure I know what that event was. Uh, I'm not going to get into the details just to, due to the personal nature of it, but um, I, I remember that event uh, and I didn't make the connection to that data point and that event until last night. Um, but now the words I used to describe it was, were very similar um, you know, just hit with, with some powerful energy that, um, knocked me down and scared me. And then, uh, I am in the recovery process from, 
from that experience. Um, you know, and I wonder if, if some of this comes from just being empathic right now. Like I said, I feel that my defensive, my defenses have been down and people have been a lot more emotional and, and throwing things in your direction. Um, so uh, there's a lot of hardship that we're facing and it's important to keep those defenses up um, and, and really work on grounding yourself right now. I think we're in some, some challenging times. Um, so the best defenses that you can have, I think are important. So you can use that intuition to help you navigate because what is it that we're facing right now? What is it that's, that we're really up against? And I choose my words carefully on these, on public platforms like this, because I, I don't want the algorithms to, to shut me down. But um, I want to share some thoughts that I've had over the years uh, about something that may be happening to us. All right, I promise this isn't a shameless self-plug, but this, is, this has been my journey. And some of the ways I record my thoughts is, is in my writing. Um, so I'm going to share an excerpt from my book because I think it's highly relevant right now to some of the things that we're experiencing. I just want to draw attention to it. This is from my book. Um, I'm human food for the archons. You can't see it with my green screen too well. Humanity's psychic connection, simulated realities, parallel worlds, and the manipulation of mankind. Um, and something I've been thinking about recently is the influence that AI is, is having on, on us, on our psyche, the, our, our phones, the information that we are receiving the feedback loop that we're creating and the algorithm that's spitting back the exact things that we want to hear, we want to see. We're creating a feedback loop through AI because in reality, I feel that AI in a lot of ways is a reflecting tool for us. And as AI develops, it's really a mirror image of ourselves on the, on the individual level, but of our human psyche, the human condition. So what is coming, yes, there's people behind the scenes that are using it, manipulating it and driving it. But ultimately, I think that AI um, is a very powerful tool that we're not, we're not aware, we're not ready to harness that power because we can't even harness our own consciousness yet. Uh, and now we're programming. We are, through our interactions with this intelligence, we're programming it to become what it's becoming. Um, and I, I watched a video the other day and it was so, it was a, it was one of those YouTube shorts. It was like a TikTok, whatever. And it was, I'm not going to get into the politics of what I was seeing, but it was, it, it was controversial to say the least. And I remember thinking like, this is insane. As, as so many people say all the time, like, this is ridiculously insane. And I remember thinking to myself the other day, and that's when it clicked and reminded me of this that I wrote. How do we know that this is real? This is so inflammatory. This is so divisive. How do we know that what we're seeing now is a real person and not a deep fake created by an AI for whatever reason? I don't know. I could speculate all day long. We don't know. And we have no way of verifying some of these videos that just pop up and are so controversial. Yet people are making decisions. People are making life decisions. People are arguing. You hear people spitting out these dogmas now based on something they're seeing on a one minute TikTok video without doing any research or without giving themselves the opportunity to think. And that's exactly what, what I've been saying over the years. The reason we need to meditate and pay attention to our own thoughts is so we can recognize when that foreign signal comes in and then we can decide what to do with that signal. I'm going to use this information or I'm going to push it aside because this information isn't serving me well. And I, I think that it's getting harder and harder because we're being bombarded by each other and we're being bombarded by our technology and our society. And I think we need to find that time to step away and find your own voice again. And that's really, I think, uh, this is why I love podcasting because these are the things I'm trying to understand myself and it's coming to me now as I'm, as I'm sharing this. I need to go find my own voice again because there's so many other voices out there. Um, I need to get out in the wilderness and get lost and just find my voice and not the voice of social media, not the voice of my friends, not the voice of everything else that influences me on a day to day. And that gets me back to my baseline so that I can start receiving information again and weeding through it and navigating. But I want to read a little bit from uh, from my book here. 
It's a chapter titled AI. And I wrote, Elon Musk of SpaceX and Tesla Motors has been very outspoken about the dangers of artificial intelligence. As reported by the Washington Post in July of 2017, when speaking at the National Governors Association summer meeting in Providence, Rhode Island, Musk warned that AI posed a, quote, fundamental risk to human civilization. Musk expl explained that, quote, once there is awareness, people will be extremely afraid as they should be. AI is a fundamental risk to the future of human civilization in a way that car accidents, airplane crashes, faulty drugs, or bad food were not. They were harmful to a set of individuals in society, but they were not harmful to individuals as a whole. Musk went on to explain that, quote, AI could start a war by doing fake news and spoofing email accounts and fake press releases and just by manipulating information, or indeed, as some companies already claim they can do, by getting people to say anything that the machine wants. Uh, one only has to look to the U.S. presidential election of 2016 to see the havoc caused by a relentless fake news campaign. It caused massive confusion, controversy, and protest throughout the United States. These stories, however, were crafted by human minds and limited by human potential. Imagine the damage that could be caused if the mind of an advanced AI created fake news with targeted objectives. According to an article published by MIT Technology Review titled, quote, Fake News 2.0, Personalized, Optimized, and Even Harder to Stop, Sean Gourley, the CEO and founder of Primer, a data mining company for the U.S. intelligence agencies, warns that AI will soon have the ability to craft its own fake news stories tailored to each individual consumer. The article explains that when speaking to an audience at MTech Digital, Gourley stated, quote, the automation of the generation of fake news is going to make it very effective. According to the article, Gourley continued to explain that, quote, technology such as primers could easily be used to generate convincing fake stories automatically, he said, and that can mean fake reports tailored to an individual's interests and sympathies and carefully tested before being released to maximize their impact. I can generate a million stories, see which one gets the most traction, double down on those. Okay, I published this in 2019. This, this article was written that I quoted in 2016. We're there. We are there right now. Um, there are signals out there that are coming at us that aren't true, that aren't authentic, that have agendas, um, that have goals. And they now, because I think some of us are in these weakened states or just these tired, like I said, I just, I would consider myself fatigued. It's easier because our defenses are down to gravitate in one line of thinking or another. Pay attention to your thoughts. Are they your own? When I say are they your own, there's different ways of thinking. There's different dogmas that we have. I'll use religion for an example. If you're a religious person, I'm not criticizing for the for the record here, but if you're a religious person, you interpret the world through your religious lens. Whatever your belief in God, you look at that and say, This is God's will, because that's how you have that's the programming that you have accepted. This is how I'm going to process the world. We all have a we all have a programming. We all have a way of processing the world. We all have a lens that we put on to categorize and use information. But I think we need to be open to allowing ourselves to really reprogram. To, if we want to get to the core, to the truth of a matter. And sometimes you may not need the truth to navigate a situation to make a yes or no decision, or should I do this? Should I not do that? But I think right now it's important to... Make sure we're using the proper filters, which means we have to take some time and reflect. We have to ask some hard questions. We have to take ownership when we make mistakes and when we fail and when we steer off the path, as I'm feeling that I've done right now. Um, and that's not always a bad thing. There's lots of learning to be had there. But can you get yourself back to that baseline or can you establish a new baseline as you're moving forward? And that, I think, is the challenge. Recognizing I'm beat, I'm tapped out, I'm not thinking clearly, I need to reset, I need to go out and find a way to get back to baseline so then I can, again, reset and start making better choices moving forward because we're still facing some challenges here. Um, and what do we do with that? How do we navigate that? I think the more important question is, how can we make 
the best of a difficult situation that's lasting a long time? How can we still find ways to impact that joy? And it's a it's something I struggle with because you get this information. It's like, ooh, we need to share this. We need to do something about it. But when I think about things on the psychic level, I wonder how much I'm amplifying a potentiality by sharing it and putting it out there so everybody can prepare for it. And I struggled with this over the Ukraine war and some of the data that I had at the beginning of that. Do I put this information out? And if by putting this out, it's scary stuff, are we creating an, a wave of potentiality, a possibility that helps bring that into realization? Are we living in a world of infinite possibilities? Are we shifting between potential timelines? If so, what causes that shift? Are we those conscious creators? I, I struggle with that. And I wonder if I put something scary out and it gets a lot of attention, does that now help society on an unconscious level choose that direction? Not that I have that level of influence, but you understand the example I'm saying here. Um, I don't know, but that is a great power and something to think about. Something else I'm working on, uh, this is the last thing I think I'm going to share here, is in looking ahead at the future, I found I spend a lot of time with my focus on the future and not enough time focused on the present. So as I'm working on getting myself grounded, I'm also working on being more present and enjoying the opportunities that are in front of me right now instead of fearing the tragedy, the loss, the hardship, the unknown, all that stuff that has not happened and may never happen. It's not easy because as I'm training to look ahead to the future, it's hard not to wonder and worry. But I think it's, it's important to find that balance and to find those ways to ground yourself. And I haven't fully figured it out yet. I'll keep you all posted as I as I go through this journey uh, in a little more detail. Um, but that's it. I'm going to wrap it up here, friends. So um, I enjoy connecting with all of you. This is always therapeutic for me to be able to have these conversations. This is the first time I'm doing what I'm considering a podcast on camera. Usually I keep it separate, but I felt that this can serve both purposes here. Um, talking to those of you that follow my remote viewing work and connecting with my audience because it's been way too long, my friends, um, you know, with, uh, with the Secret Podcast. Quick commercial, speaking of books here, I want to share, I have released my book, The Hive, Part One, The Virus, The Infected, and The Immune. If you want to know really where my mind's been over the last year, talking about AI and the integration with human consciousness, this is my first public work of fiction here. Um, and it's a really fun story when you just kind of let your mind run wild. And writing has been therapeutic for me in taking all these crazy things that I talk about and putting it into fiction without worrying about having to be right. Just saying, what if, here's what I'm thinking about right now and putting it out there. And I've noticed, uh, this is why I wish I had more time. I've gotten so many ideas for books that have been coming to me lately. I just haven't had, like I jot them down but I haven't had time to sit and, and explore that. But, uh, you know, I hope to, to create some more windows of time in the near future and, and knock out some more writing projects. I've got quite a few things started. Um, those creative outlets for me are always very helpful in getting grounded and uh, stepping away from all the insanity that seems to surround us sometimes. So uh, let me know how you're doing out there in the comment section, please let me know your thoughts, uh, any suggestions that you have, any experiences that you've had. Let's, uh, let's hear about it and maybe help one another out. And that is going to do it for this episode of the Seeker Podcast, where small changes among the masses can have a massive impact around the world. I encourage you to be that change. Never stop questioning, keep an open mind, and let your intuition be your guide. Thank you.
water, my friend. My friend.